Article 76. Management of Children's Own Property. 1. Children aged full 15 or older may themselves manage or ask their parents to manage their own property. 2. Property of children who are under 15 or children who have lost their civil act capacity shall be managed by their parents. Parents may authorize other persons to manage their children's own property. Unless otherwise agreed by parents and children, children's own property managed by their parents or other persons shall be given to them when they are full 15 years or older or have fully restored their civil act capacity. 3. Parents shall not manage their children's own property when their children are under the guardianship of other persons as prescribed by the civil code, or when the persons giving or bequeathing under testament property to their children have designated other persons to manage such property, or in other cases as prescribed by law. 4. In case parents are managing property of their minor children or adult children who have lost their civil act capacity and their children are assigned to other guardians, the children's property shall be delivered to the guardians for management under the civil code. Article 77. Disposition of property of minor children or adult children who have lost their civil act capacity. 1. Parents or guardians who manage under 15 children's own property have the right to dispose of such property in the interests of the children and shall take into account the children's desire if they are full 9 years or older. 2. Children aged between full 15 and under 18 have the right to dispose of their own property other than real estate, movable assets with registered ownership and use rights or property used for business activities the disposal of which is subject to written consent of their parents or guardians. 3. Guardians of adult children who have lost their civil act capacity may dispose of the latter's own property. Article 78. Rights and Obligations of Adoptive Parents and Adopted Children 1. An adoptive parent and his, her adopted child have the rights and obligations of parents and children prescribed in this law from the time the adoption relationship is established under the adoption law. In case of termination of an adoption under a court's decision, the rights and obligations of an adoptive parent toward his her adopted child shall terminate from the legally effective date of the court's decision. 2. The rights and obligations of natural parents and their children who have been adopted by other persons must comply with the adoption law. 3. The rights and obligations of natural parents and their children shall be restored from the time the adoption relationship terminates. When they no longer have natural parents or their natural parents cannot afford to raise minor children or adult children who have lost their civil act capacity or have no working capacity and no property to support themselves, a court shall settle the adoption termination and designate guardians for the children in accordance with the civil code. Article 79. Obligations and Rights of Step Parents and Stepchildren. 1. A step-parent has the rights and obligations to look after, raise, care for and educate stepchildren who live with him or her according to Articles 69, 71 and 72 of this law. 2. A stepchild has the rights and obligations to care for and support his, her step-parent who lives with him or her according to Articles 70 and 71 of this law. Article 80. Rights and Obligations of Daughters-in-Law sons-in-law and parents-in-law. In case a daughter or son-in-law lives with her, his parents-in-law, all parties have the rights and obligations to respect, attend to, care for, and assist one another according to Articles 69, 70, 71 and 72 of this law. Article 81. Looking after, care for, raising and education of children after divorce. 1. After a divorce. Parents still have rights and obligations to look after, care for, raise and educate minor children or adult children who have lost their civil act capacity or have no working capacity and no property to support themselves in accordance with this law, the civil code and other relevant laws. 2. Husband and wife shall reach agreement on the person who directly raises their children and on his and her obligations and rights toward their children after divorce. 
If they fail to reach agreement, the court shall appoint either of them to directly raise the children, taking into account the children's benefits in all aspects. If a child is full seven years or older, his slash her desire shall be considered. 3. A child under 36 months of age shall be directly raised by the mother, unless the mother cannot afford to directly look after, care for, raise and educate the child or otherwise agreed by the parents in the interests of the child. Article 82. Obligations and Rights of the Parent Who Does Not Directly Raise Children After Divorce 1. The parent who does not directly raise a child shall respect the child's right to live with the person who directly raises him, her. 2. The parent who does not directly raise a child shall support this child. 3. After divorce, the person who does not directly raise a child has the right and obligation to visit and care for this child without being obstructed by any person. The parent who directly raises a child has the right to request a court to restrict the right of the other parent who does not directly raise this child if the latter takes advantage of his, her visit to and care for the child to obstruct or adversely affect the looking after, care for, raising and education of this child. Article 83 Obligations and Rights of the Parent Directly Raising Children Toward the Person Not Directly Raised Children After Divorce 1. The parent directly raising a child has the right to request the person not directly raising this child to fulfill the obligations prescribed in Article 82 of this law and request this person and family members to respect his, her right to raise the child. 2. The parent directly raising a child and family members may not obstruct the person not directly raising the child from visiting, caring for, raising and educating this child. Article 84. Change of the person directly raising children after divorce. 1. At the request of a parent or a person or an organization prescribed in Clause 5 of this article, a court may decide to change the person directly raising a child. 2. Change of the person directly raising a child shall be settled when there is one of the following grounds. A slash the parents agrees on change of the person directly raising a child in the interests of this child. B slash the person directly raising the child no longer has sufficient conditions to directly look after, care for, raise and educate the child. 3. Upon change of the person directly raising a child aged full 7 or older, this child's desire shall be taken into account. 4. When seeing that both parents fail to have sufficient conditions to directly raise a child, a court shall decide to assign this child to a guardian in accordance with the civil code. 5. When there is the ground prescribed at point B, clause 2 of this article, in the interests of a child, the following persons, agencies or organizations have the right to request change of the person directly raising this child. A slash an next of kin. B slash the state management agency in charge of families. C slash the state management agency in charge of children. D slash the women's union. Article 85. Restrictions on parents' rights toward their minor children. 1. A parent shall have his, her rights toward a minor child restricted when A slash he or she is convicted of one of the crimes of intentionally infringing upon the life health, dignity or honor of this child or commits acts of seriously breaching the obligations to look after, care for, raise and educate children. b slash he or she disperses property of the child. c slash he or she leads a depraved life. d slash he or she incites or forces the child to act against law or social ethics. 2. On a case-by-case basis, a court shall itself or at the request of the persons, agencies or organizations prescribed in Article 86 of this law, issue a decision disallowing a parent to look after, care for and educate a child or manage the child's own property or act as the child's representative at law for between one and five years. The court may consider shortening this period of time. Article 86 Persons entitled to request a court to restrict a parent's rights toward a minor child. 1. 
a parent or guardian of a minor child has, as prescribed by the civil procedure law, the right to request a court to restrict a parent's rights toward this child. 2. The following persons, agencies and organizations have, as prescribed by the civil procedure law, the right to request a court to restrict a parent's rights toward a minor child. A slash next of kin. B slash the state management agency in charge of families. C slash the state management agency in charge of children. D slash the women's union. 3. When detecting a parent committing violations of Clause 1, Article 85 of this law, other persons, agencies and organizations have the right to request the agencies and organizations prescribed at points B, C and D. Clause 2 of this article to propose a court to restrict this parent's rights toward the minor child. Article 87. Legal Consequences of Restriction on Parents' Rights Toward Their Minor Children. 1. When a parent has his, her rights toward a minor child restricted by a court, the other parent shall exercise the rights to look after, raise, care for and educate this child manage the child's own property and acts as the child's representative at law. 2. A guardian shall be assigned to look after, care for and educate a minor child and manage the child's own property in accordance with the civil code and this law in the following cases. A slash both parents have their rights toward the minor child restricted by a court. B slash the parent who does not have his. Her rights toward the minor child restricted does not have sufficient conditions to perform the rights and obligations toward the child. C slash a parent has the rights toward the minor child restricted and the other parent of the child has not been identified yet. 3. A parent who has the rights toward a minor child restricted by a court shall still perform the obligation to support this child. Section 2. Identification of Parents and Children. Article 88. Identification of Parents. 1. A child who is born or conceived by the wife during the marriage period is the common child of the husband and wife. A child who is born within 300 days from the time of termination of a marriage shall be regarded as a child conceived by the wife during the marriage period. A child who is born before the date of marriage registration and recognized by his her parents is the common child of the husband and wife. 2. When a parent does not recognize a child, he or she must have evidence and such non-recognition shall be determined by a court. Article 89. Identification of Children. 1. A person who is not recognized as the parent of a person may request a court to identify that the latter is his, her child. 2. A person who is recognized as the parent of a person may request a court to identify that the latter is not his, her child. Article 90. Right to Recognize Parents. 1. A person has the right to recognize his, her parent even in case the parent has died. 2. An adult may recognize his, her parent without consent of the other parent. Article 91. Right to Recognize Children. 1. A parent has the right to recognize his, her child even in case this child has died. 2. A married person may recognize his, her child without consent of his, her spouse. Article 92. Identification of parents and children in case requesting persons have died. When a person who requests identification of his, her parent or child dies, his, her next of kin has the right to request a court to identify the parent or child for him, her. Article 93. Identification of parents in case of giving birth with assisted reproductive technology. 1. When a wife gives birth to a child with assisted reproductive technology, the identification of parents must comply with Article 88 of this law. 2. A single woman who gives birth to a child with assisted reproductive technology is the mother of that child. 3. No parent-child relationship shall arise between a person who donates sperm, egg or embryo and the child born with assisted reproductive technology. 4. 
The identification of parents in case of altruistic gestational surrogacy must comply with Article 94 of this law. Article 94. Identification of parents in case of altruistic gestational surrogacy. A child born in case of altruistic gestational surrogacy is the common child of the husband and wife who ask for such gestational surrogacy from the time this child is born. Article 95. Conditions for Altruistic Gestational Surrogacy 1. Altruistic gestational surrogacy shall be based on the voluntariness of involved parties and established in writing. 2. Husband and wife have the right to ask for a person's gestational surrogacy when they fully meet the following conditions. A slash the wife is certified by a competent health organization as unable to carry a pregnancy and give birth even with assisted reproductive technology. B slash the couple has no common child. C slash the couple has received health, legal and psychological counseling. 3. A gestational carrier must fully satisfy the following conditions. A slash she is a next of kin of the same line of the wife or husband who asks for gestational surrogacy. B slash she has given birth and is permitted for gestational surrogacy only once. C slash she is at a suitable age and is certified by a competent health organization as eligible for gestational surrogacy. D slash in case she is married, she obtains her husband's written consent. D D slash she has received health legal and psychological counseling. 4. Altruistic gestational surrogacy must not contravene the law on giving birth with assisted reproductive technology. 5. The government shall detail this article. Article 96. Agreement on Altruistic Gestational Surrogacy. 1. An agreement on altruistic gestational surrogacy between husband and wife who ask for gestational surrogacy below referred to as gestational surrogacy requesting party, and husband and wife who give gestational surrogacy, below referred to as gestational carrier party, must contain the following basic contents. A slash full information on the gestational surrogacy requesting party and the gestational carrier party according to the related conditions prescribed in Article 95 of this law. B slash commitment to fulfill the rights and obligations prescribed in Articles 97 and 98 of this law. C slash settlement of consequences in case of occurrence of obstetrical incidents, support for ensuring reproductive health for the gestational carrier during the period of pregnancy and delivery, child recognition by the gestational surrogacy requesting party rights and obligations of both parties in case the child has not been delivered to the gestational surrogacy requesting party and other related rights and obligations. d slash civil liabilities in case one or both parties breach commitments under the agreement. 2. An agreement on gestational surrogacy shall be made in writing and notarized. In case the couple requesting gestational surrogacy or the couple giving gestational surrogacy authorizes the other to make the agreement, such authorization shall be made in writing and notarized. Authorization to a third party is legally invalid. In case an agreement on gestational surrogacy between the gestational carrier party and the gestational surrogacy requesting party is made concurrently with the agreement between them and the health establishment conducting the birth giving with assisted reproductive technology, this agreement must be certified by a competent person of this health establishment. Article 97. Rights and Obligations of the Altruistic Gestational Carrier Party. 1. A gestational carrier and her husband have the rights and obligations as parents in reproductive health care and care for and nursing of the child until this child is delivered to the gestational surrogacy requesting party, and shall deliver the child to the gestational surrogacy requesting party. 2. A gestational carrier shall comply with the Ministry of Health's regulations on examination and screening for detecting and treating fetal abnormalities and defects. Three. A gestational carrier is entitled to the maternity regime as prescribed by the labor and social insurance laws until the child is delivered to the gestational surrogacy requesting party.
when the duration from the date of giving birth to a child to the date of delivering that child is less than 60 days, a gestational carrier is still entitled to the maternity regime for full 60 days. The child born from gestational surrogacy shall not be counted into the number of children under the policy on population and family planning. 4. The gestational carrier party has the right to request the gestational surrogacy requesting parties support and care for reproductive health. In the interest of her life or health or for fetal development, a gestational carrier has the right to on the number of embryos and continuation or discontinuation of the pregnancy in accordance with the laws on reproductive health care and giving birth with assisted reproductive technology. 5. When the gestational surrogacy requesting party refuses to receive the child, the gestational carrier party has the right to request a court to oblige the former to receive that child. Article 98. Rights and Obligations of Altruistic Gestational Surrogacy Requesting Party 1. The gestational surrogacy requesting party shall pay actual expenses for ensuring reproductive health according to the Ministry of Health's regulations. 2. Rights and obligations of the altruistic gestational surrogacy requesting party toward their child shall arise from the time the child is born. The mother requesting gestational surrogacy is entitled to the maternity regime in accordance with the labor and social insurance laws from the time of receiving her child to the time the child is full six months. 3. The gestational surrogacy requesting party may not refuse to receive their child. A gestational surrogacy requesting party that delays receipt of his, her child or breaches the child nursing and caring obligations shall support this child in accordance with this law and be handled in accordance with relevant laws. If causing damage to the gestational carrier party, he or she shall pay damages. In case the gestational surrogacy requesting party dies, the child is entitled to inheritance of the former's estate in accordance with law. 4. A child born from gestational surrogacy and other members of the family of the gestational surrogacy requesting party have the rights and obligations prescribed in this law, the civil code and other relevant laws. 5. When the gestational carrier party refuses to deliver the child, the gestational surrogacy requesting party has the right to request a court to oblige the former to deliver the child. Article 99. Settlement of disputes related to giving birth with assisted reproductive technology and altruistic gestational surrogacy. 1. The court is competent to settle disputes over giving birth with assisted reproductive technology and gestational surrogacy. 2. When both husband and wife being the gestational surrogacy requesting party die or lose their civil act capacity before the child is delivered to them, the gestational carrier party has the right to raise this child. If the gestational carrier party refuses to raise the child, the guardianship and support for the child must comply with this law and the civil code. Article 100 Handling of violations related to giving birth with assisted reproductive technology and gestational surrogacy. Parties involving in giving birth with assisted reproductive technology and gestational surrogacy that violate conditions, rights and obligations prescribed in this law shall be handled for civil, administrative or penal liabilities depending on the nature and severity of their violations. 